Welcome to Out and About, the programme where we talk to people we meet as part of our work. In this programme we talk to Ken Groves, a resident of Titchfield in Hampshire, about his research into the mystery of the closing of the Rivermere Estuary. By training I am a physicist and engineer and I've lived in this cottage now for 50 years and when we found out about the history of the cottage that it was uh, built uh, uh, some 570 years ago um, I realised that there was an awful lot in the history to be discovered and clearly part of the interest would have been in the river because this uh, cottage um, is one of the few uh, uh, ancient cottages which actually are situated in the, uh, in the River Mion estuary. So I started to look uh, and find out about the history and I realised from investigation that uh, an awful lot of the uh, previous work had been concentrated on the Titsfield Canal and all the writing was on that subject and almost nothing about the closing of the estuary. And as I'm an engineer, it quickly became obvious that the closing of the estuary was a far more complex undertaking than the building of the canal. And I started to look at how could they possibly have closed the estuary at an early date. We know from the parish records, Titsfield Parish records, that it's recorded that the uh, um, estuary was shut out by uh, one Richard Talbots at the cost of the Earl of Southampton in 1611, which uh, obviously indicated that uh, the estuary was shut out from the sea. In other words, that was the year in which it was closed off. How did they managed to do such a prodigious task in 1611 with the very limited amount of equipment that they had available and the knowledge. And if we were to close down an estuary today, we would find suitable engineers. An investigation found that the third Earl undoubtedly would have been acquainted and closely acquainted with two of the leading engineers at the time. The first one was Henry Briggs, who uh, is famous for being associated with logarithms, and it is his version of the logarithms which we all used uh, when logarithms was the favourite thing to use in mathematical calculations. Uh, the other man is Edward Wright, who um, was closely involved with William Gilbert on uh, uh, terrestrial magnetism and um, he was the engineer concerned in the building of the new river in London which brought fresh water from Hartford into the city of London which was badly needed at that time and he organised this quite significant feat of building a, a 22 mile long new river effectively which was uh, between six and ten feet wide all the way into Islington in London. So there was a man with considerable knowledge of, of water based products. These two were at Cambridge at the same time and Henry Briggs was actually at St John's College which was the college that the third Earl attended. They would quite definitely have known each other and they these would have been the first people who he would have thought of to bring in and they certainly had the ability of, uh, of looking at closing the estuary. The closing of the estuary, it became perfectly obvious that the actual closing part of it would have taken months if not years to undertake because you could only work at low tide and you had this uh, substantial size estuary of some 400 metres to fill in. The only possible thing that could have happened was that the estuary would have filled up with water which would have been partially salt water and partially fresh water 
And at the end of the day, you would have had, ended up with a complete lake which filled the, at the previous estuary, so you virtually had high tide for 24 hours a day. The next thing I undertook was to find out were there any other estuaries which were, had been closed uh, from the sea, and it turns out that the only other estuary in the UK which has been closed from the sea is the River Wandsbeck in Northumberland. So I got in contact uh, with uh, the people who had closed the estuary, and it was closed in 1975. And um, I went up to see them to find out uh, what, uh, what problems that they had and found that exactly the same thing happened up there when they closed the estuary off in 1975. Uh, a large lake formed behind and the other interesting thing was that already in the, uh, in the 40 odd years since it was closed, uh, silting of considerable amount was already starting to happen because what has happened to the River Meon estuary, clearly from the geological point of view, you can see that the whole of the estuary has gradually silted up and now there is just the river and the canal running down and the rest of it is completely flat, which is typical of silting up of an estuary. There is a considerable amount of controversy in the past as to why the third earl closed off the estuary. And as I've said, historians have concentrated on the canal, not the closing. But the th one of the theories is that the estuary was closed off in order to, uh, to provide arable and hunting land for the third earl. But of course, because from an engineering point of view, the only thing that could have happened was the large lake formed behind. And it was many, many years before any arable land became available. I think it more likely that they knew there was a large lake there. And of course, this would have given the third L the capability of moving ships between uh, the, the town and the sea for 24 hours a day. And as he undoubtedly put a, a, a sea lock in at the sea end, he would have been able to take the ships in and out at high tide um, twice a day. So that looks the most likely reason why he closed the estuary off. Uh, other people have said that the canal uh, was built as an irrigation channel. But the interesting thing is that the canal stretches from the middle of the town of Titsfield right into the sea. And there's no other irrigation channel anywhere in the country which has those two particular features. So one has to assume that the canal was also built to, uh, to put ships uh, somehow or other between, uh, between Titsfield and the sea. And of course the third earl had become very much an entrepreneur after he left the Tower of London in 1603. And he formed the ironworks, which is just to the north of of Titchfield, so he would have wanted to have shipped the iron that he was producing or that he was forming uh, out and also he was very heavily into the wool trade and also he became deeply involved in the Far East uh, and also in the Americas at the same time so he was importing and possibly exporting as well and he needed much more uh, shipping facilities. Ships were getting larger as well so there's a very good reason why he closed the estuary, and the canal might well have been built, might well have been built in parts, particularly the sea end and the town end, which joined the lake into the town and joined the lake into the sea. And the rest of the canal was added sometime later, possibly up to 50 years later, uh, as the silting up took place. And as I've said before, the silting up has been seen to be quite severe in the River Wandsbeck already in Northumberland.